Thank you everyone for joining us and welcome to our back to school webinar series for Inspire Science. This session is for grades nine to 12. My name is Sarah Shaja and I'm a marketing manager at McGraw Hill. And I'll be a moderator today to help you out if you need any support during the session, or if you have any questions, feel free to drop a note to me in the chat box. My colleague Hamas should be joining me shortly as well. And we are in the background if you need any kind of support, if you face any technical difficulties, please let us know. We have with me Jason Marshall, who's, who's joining us today. Jason is a senior national consultant at McGraw-Hill. Thank you, Jason, for your time and being here today. Good to be with you, Suresh, as always. Thank you. And uh, many of you might know Jason already from previous sessions, so it might be no surprise, but he's done several workshops like these before for curriculum solutions, presentations, he's technology training schools in the United States and abroad. And we're very happy that he could do this session. It's actually his second session. He's just done one for K8 to 8. So this one is for 9 to 12. And just before I hand over to Jason, I just want to quickly cover a few housekeeping slides. So the recording of this session will be passed over to you. So any parts that go missing or you have a you have a bandwidth issue, you should you should, you will receive the recording on your email so you can watch it back. Um, you will have the opportunity for Q and A towards the end of the session, but feel free to drop it in the Q and A box that's on on your right side so you can type your questions and we can take it up at the end of the session. And also, um, we will provide you a certificate once the webinar is completed. So we will be sending you the certificate on your email as well. So watch out for the recording as well as the certificate. All right. And I just want to make sure that you interact with us. So there's a chat box as well. There is a QA and a box. Make sure you interact with us as you're doing right now. Go ahead. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the, in the Q&A box and we can pick them up soon. And thank you so much. That's all from my side. I can stop sharing my screen and let Jason continue. Thanks, Jason. All right. Thank you, Suresh. All right. Just a second to set this up. And we'll be ready here. One moment here. Okay, what I have coming up on my screen here is my smartphone, and we're going to begin with it. But first, I'd like to say thank you for joining this webinar. Thank you for being here. My name is Jason Marshall, as Sarish said, I'm McGraw-Hill's National Science Consultant, and we're going to do a back-to-school overview of Inspire Science 9 through 12. I know Sarisha said we have some new users on the line here, so if you're not familiar with the program, we're going to give you a really good baseline of what Inspire Science is, how a lesson flows, and some resources available to you as a teacher. If you're a teacher that has been teaching for a while, hopefully I share with you a few new tricks as well, things that you maybe didn't utilize this past year. And uh, maybe I will remind you of them or uh, introduce them to you from the very beginning. So let's go ahead and begin. One of the themes that I wanna get across this uh, session is how many different ways you can have students access the content in your classroom. Uh, how many varieties of the ebook there are for you to have students access the program? Uh, one of them is through the app, and it's called the Read Anywhere app. It comes with Inspire Science. You may not have known that, but every student gets it. It's a free download. They download the, uh, the app, and when they, once they have the app on the device, they have the book on their device. And so here I am in my book as a student. If I go up to the upper right, I can have this book read to me. There's an audio playback for this book. Anywhere, anytime, I can access that audio playbook. Notice that I can highlight this book. So how do I highlight the pages? Well, I just click and drag on a section. And when I do, a little toolbar appears. And one of my options is here to highlight. So I can highlight the section or maybe have this specific section read to me. And once this book is on my, uh, my phone, it's on my phone for offline use. I do not need to have an internet signal from that point on. Uh, Learn Smart and SmartBook is also accessible from this device. So we're gonna see Learn Smart here in just a little bit. It's an adaptive personalized learning tool. 
and it's accessible from this uh, device as well, where students can access questions. So I wanted to start with the phone, and it's just one of many different ways in which students can access the Inspire Science program in a way that works best for them. So let's begin with a little overview, and then we're going to dive into the online experience, okay? So let's begin with Inspire Science. Inspire Science uh, is our 9 through 12 program. And uh, if you are a traditional teacher, and by traditional, I mean, you say, hey, I've been teaching for 30 years. I don't need a lot of technology in my classroom. Uh, my students are successful. They come back and tell me how uh, my uh, classroom helped them to be successful in college. If that sounds like you, Inspire Science supports you. Students get a student edition. Teachers get a teacher's edition. As long as you have the ability to project and maybe print out resources, you're going to be incredibly successful with Inspire Science. You don't need a lot of technology, but a lot of you might be saying, no, that's not me at all. I'm over here at the right. I'm the digital Ford classroom. My students are on devices every single day. They have their own, and I'm looking for a program to maximize their utility. If that's you, I'm going to try to share with you some ways this in this short session in which you can have students on their devices daily. Again, through different ways in which they can access the program. On what devices? PC, laptop, Chromebook, tablet, and smartphone, all devices, including the smartphone that I started this presentation out with. And again, once that book is loaded on the smartphone, they don't need to have an internet signal at that point. It's loaded on their phone. One of the biggest excuses I got for not turning in work, my students not turning in work, is they said, oh, I left my book in my locker, or their book was someplace, right? And that might have been true. But they tend to have that phone close by now. And with that phone, they'll have their book, no more excuses. And so uh, multiple ways of accessing the program. What other experiences are students going to find on those devices? They come in all shapes and sizes, science concept videos, virtual labs and simulations, phenomena videos. This is a phenomena based program. There's an interactive ebook. That's one of the different types of books that brings all of these experiences together, an adaptive personalized learning tool called Smartbook. We're gonna take a look at all of those today. But since we have some new users on, let's just kind of walk you through the program, give you an idea of how a unit module and lesson flows. Every unit begins with an encounter the phenomena feature, a STEM module project launch and a formative assessment probe. Every module, and by the way, if you wanna think of the term modules as chapters, feel free to do that. Instead of the word chapter, we use the word module, but it's the same exact idea. We have a phenomenon video here. I'm going to share one of those with you and claim evidence and reasoning. All of our lessons are organized by the 5E lesson model. Many of you are familiar with that. It's a research-based approach. Engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. We go to a uh, module close, and we're going to wrap some things up. The claim evidence and reasoning. Can we, uh, uh, can we explain the phenomena at the end? There's a module test available. Now, you don't have to use all of these activities. All, these are just the types of activities that are available at each step of the lesson model. And then at the end of the unit, there's a unit project, a STEM project. If you like to integrate STEM projects, you can integrate there. If you don't, you cannot. You, you, you can choose not to. But these are the types of experiences students are going to encounter. In the teacher's edition, at the beginning of every unit, there's a driving question storyboard. Now, this happens to be a best practice that's being used quite a bit in a lot of classrooms around the country where you post the, the driving question for that, uh, that unit. These are the questions at the module level that students have to answer in order to understand the larger question. And then students share their thinking, their questions in, on sticky notes that we try to get answers to over the course of the, uh, the unit. So it engages students. They, they get their voice heard. We try to answer every individual student questions and curiosities and wonders along the way. Uh, this driving question storyboard uh, is followed by a formative assessment probe. Now, this is a feature that is designed to uncover student misconceptions going into the unit. Students have ideas that they get at home, at school, on the internet, and some of them are accurate and some of them aren't accurate. So let's identify what those misconceptions might be. Now, it's not enough to identify misconceptions. You got to clarify them at some point. And so clarify misconceptions will be a box you see in your teacher's edition along the way, uh, addressing common misconceptions and how to address them in your classroom. If you are an NGSS-oriented uh, district, we've got some support for you as well. Those color coding of the performance expectations and the three dimensions, you'll see it at the beginning of each module. You'll also see it throughout the textbook. 
uh, little boxes sharing you what core ideas are being addressed in this lesson, how to integrate the science and engineering practices, and how to integrate those cross-cutting concepts. And they'll be color-coded. For instance, this cross-cutting concept box is green. So let's walk through a unit, kind of give it a familiarity for those of you that are brand new to this program about how Inspire Science flows. You'll see a unit storyline feature. It's, it's a pop-out box in your teacher's edition, kind of sharing with you the uh, pathway for student understanding throughout this unit. We continue through the unit. Every single step along the way, every module will be a little bit of a piece of the puzzle for students to figure out what's going on. Now, why do I have this screen on the, uh, this uh, image on the screen? Where is this? This is Cancun, Mexico. I took a vacation to Cancun, Mexico in 2015, and I heard about the wonderful beaches we'd see in Cancun, Mexico, and how uh, we'd spend all day on the beach because the water was crystal clear, unlike anywhere you've ever seen, Jason, they used to say. But when I went in 2015, it didn't look like this. Cancun looked more like this. Sargassum bloom was everywhere. And sargassum is a form of algae. And I, as a science teacher, I asked myself, well, why, why can't they solve this problem? Can they use this for food or fuel or building materials? Or better yet, solve at this source. And this was a real world challenge. And the STEM teacher, the, the, the science teacher in me came out when I saw this real world challenge that this resort community was having with this algae bloom. Well, wouldn't you know it? We have a STEM project, an algae bloom remediation in our biology program. All of our STEM projects uh, are at the a culminating experience at the end of the unit. Students are going to use the engineering design loop to come up with a creative solution to this real world problem. We're going to think of design constraints, whether they be cost constraints, logistical, uh, environmental constraints, and they're going to come up with a creative solution that they're going to present to the class. Every unit will end with this culminating experience. In the unit that we're going to walk through, it's going to be about genetically engineered corn. They're going to incorporate the concepts of DNA structure and functions and application of genetic engineering to solve this problem. What is the most efficient way to protect uh, corn crops from the European corn borer? And so that's going to be the uh, engineering design challenge that they have at the end of this particular unit. So we're going to walk through a module introduction to genetics and patterns of inheritance. Now I know we have some other, and every single module will begin with a phenomena video. Now I know we have some physical science teachers and some earth science teachers in the room. In earth science, yours might begin with a video on where does lava come from? If you're a physical science teacher, it might be could a person really sink and disappear into a pit of quicksand? Uh, I happen to have this physical science uh, phenomenon video up and running. So let's let's take a look at it uh, to see an idea what of a physical science um, encounter the phenomenon looks like. So here we are in that particular one, classification of states of matter. Let's just play a little bit. We won't play at all. Well, the, the video goes on to share the strength of quicksand and how much force it takes to uh, pull a crash test dummy out of the quicksand once submerged. And let's just say the crash test dummy doesn't fare too well when pulled from a crane. It has it exerts an enormous force on it. So these phenomena videos are designed to spark curiosity, set up the module. Every single module begin with one. Back to our, our module that we're going to walk through. Introduction to genetics and the patterns of inheritance. Uh, when we get into the lesson, we had claim evidence and reasoning at the beginning of the module. It's a framework that best uh, uh, and best practice that a lot of classrooms are using. If you're not a claim evidence and reasoning user, you can skip right over this feature. There's always going to be features in, in programs that you decide, you know what, I use that in my classroom. I do not, or I do not. So uh, give yourself permission to not use that if that's not something you use. We go to the next lesson, and we're going to get into the lesson itself. Remember, we use the 5E lesson model. Um, and we're going to begin with engage. So uh, my laptop is kind of freezing on me a little bit here. Okay. So engage, we have, what is the significance of metals experiments to the study of genetics? And most of these will be paired, paired with a video that students can watch. So let's take a quick look at this one. Imagine look, a chick gets information for black feathers from its father and information for black feathers from its mother. Or it could inherit black from dad and white from mum. All white from dad and black from mum. Or finally, it could get information for white feathers from both of them. Bateson and his team observe that breeding from a pair of black chickens always produces three black chicks for every white chick. To explain that observation, he has to make one final logical assumption. 
Bates introduces that the information for black feathers overrides the information for white. So in three of the chicks, you get black feathers. One, two, three. Only when the chick gets information for white feathers from both of its parents and no instructions for black feathers do you get a white chick. And bingo, you have your three to one, three black, one white ratio. These videos are embedded within an interactive ebook experience and allow students to respond along the way, to highlight, to annotate. Uh, we're going to take a close look at the interactive ebook experience here in just a few moments. Uh, from there, we go into explore the second E. And that means labs are investigations. All of our labs are investigations. Uh, most of them are printable online. So every module has a launch lab. Think of this as ABC activity before content, having students doing something at the beginning of the module to set the stage. Quick investigations. These are also shorter experiences. They take about 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes maybe, giving, the, uh, giving you the opportunity and the time to analyze the data, have a conversation about it. Maybe compare data between tables and, and see why they may be the same or maybe why they uh, might be different. Uh, it allows you those opportunities. Design your own labs or a little bit more open-ended. Here students have a procedure per se, or rather they don't have a procedure per se, they have a plan. We give them enough structure so they know what to do, but exactly how they execute the lab is up to them. Uh, uh, applying practices are designed to support the science and engineering practices. You'll even find forensics labs embedded within the program. For those labs that are too dangerous, too time consuming, too expensive to do in class, we do those virtually in Inspire Science with both virtual labs and FET simulations. So let's, let's sneak a peek online to see how I might get to these virtual labs and FET simulations. I'm going to go back to this online experience. I'm going to close out this video with that crash test dummy. I'm going to close out a couple of these things. And I'm going to go into, oh, let's say my physical science course. Okay. I'm a physical science teacher, and I'm looking for virtual labs and simulations. So there's two ways of finding resources in the program. One is search for resources, and whether one is browse course. Okay, So I'm in my dashboard screen. It's my home screen. It's the first screen I see when I enter a class, and I have these two ways of finding resources. Search for resources and browse course. These same two tools, by the way, are also found here over here on the course view. So if I click course view, I'll have the exact same two tools. Same two tools, just in two different locations. You know, you can access them from either location. So let me, let's access them from here. How are they different? Well, search for resources is what I like to call a filtering tool. How would you like to filter down to find what you're looking for? The course view is a digital filing cabinet. Now, if I were filtering for virtual labs, I might type virtual in a keyword search, a keyword filter. So I'm going to type V-I-R-T-U-A-L, and I've got 124 hits. Now, not all of these are virtual labs. As you can see, some of these are print resources that support the virtual lab. But if I filter those out, looks like I've got a lot of virtual labs here anyway. Okay? It says 59 hits. Now, if I close this out, and if I were to type FET in my keyword search, another large search number, if I filter out some of the print resources, quite a few FET simulations as well. It says 99. Uh, so a keyword search is one of the ways I might filter to find resources. Now, our resources are organized um, um, in either a filtering search, or you could access them that way, or you can access through them through what I like to call a digital filing cabinet. And that's my course view. We're going to come back and, and go into the, the digital experience in, in much detail here in just a little bit. But FET simulations is one of many resources available to me. If I continue, uh, here's an example of a FET simulation. All of our lessons are in an interactive ebook format that allows me to sign resources a chunk at a time. And what do I mean by chunk? I mean like a little segment of the lesson. I don't have to uh, assign the entire lesson. I can assign just a little piece of it. So what does that look like? Well, embedded within this lesson, here's an example of one. And embedded within this lesson is a little bit of reading, not too much, just enough narrative. There's interactives embedded. There is uh, often a self-check practice embedded within the segment. And then maybe a true assessment that could be assigned for a grade. We'll take a look at this interactive experience in just a second. I'm continuing through this lesson. Vocabulary will be addressed, not just uh, 
new vocabulary but word origins academic vocabulary we learned from marzano the importance of academic vocabulary and how about science use versus common use words that have multiple meanings that could be very confusing to our students um you know like the word store when you use the word store in your classroom many of our students are probably thinking of a place to buy something and not uh not the science use or polar polar means one thing in a physical science classroom something entirely different maybe in social studies so uh, we address these in the program as well. Now, and if you're a fi physical science teacher in biology, there is a couple ancillary resources that provide another version of the book, and that is a lower level read. So on the left-hand side, you see the student edition. This is the hardbound student edition that students have available to them, the regular student edition. On the right-hand side, you see the reading essentials. So how is it different? Well, as I see here, I've got the same headings. I even have the same subheadings. But on the right hand side, more white space, larger font size, not a big deal to you and I, we're proficient readers, but to our struggling readers, this aesthetic alone is, is much less intimidating. The most powerful part of the reading essentials is that it's written two to three grade levels below the student edition on the left. It's a lower level read and it's available to your biology students and your physical science students. I wish it was available for chemistry and physics, Maybe uh, we might be working on that, but it's not available right now. Just biology and physical science. The other resource that's available to all core titles, biology, physical science, earth science, chemistry, physics, is called the Science Notebook. Let's go to that. Science Notebook, again, is on the right. The student book is on the left. So how is the Science Notebook different? Well, the Science Notebook is the Cornell system for notes. Main idea on the left, keep it very clean. Just the main ideas indent and put the supporting details. So for every single day of instruction, your students can take organized, effective notes. When I was in school, my notes were completely disorganized. I would try to take notes. There would be arrows everywhere. Uh, my notes, my penmanship wasn't as good as I, I would like for it to be. And I, so two weeks later, when I was trying to study for a test, I, could, I, could, I couldn't. I couldn't understand my own notes because I didn't have any structure to them. The Cornell Notes provides the structure for your students so they can go back and study when they're preparing for a test. Uh, both the reading essentials and the science notebook are in PDF form format. So if you want to print these out and make copies, you can uh, and have students take notes with a pen or a pencil, but they can also type in these and complete these digitally. Okay? Uh, we get to elaborate in this overview. It's going to be some sort of an extension outside into the real world. And then when we get to evaluate, not only is it a regular check, there's going to be a smart book down here at the bottom, a Learn Smart Smart Book section. So what is Learn Smart and Smart Book? Well, it's an adaptive, personalized learning tool. And I like to explain what I mean by the word adaptive. Think of websites like Netflix and Amazon. Um, you bet, I, bet you get, I bet you get the idea, the more you go to these sites, the more they're getting to know you a little bit better, your likes, your dislikes, your preferences. Well, Learn Smart is doing the exact same thing, except it's getting to know what students know and what they don't know. And it's prescribing a pathway to mastery. The smart book comes pre-highlighted for them, focusing their attention on the content that will be a part of this smart book assignment. Uh, once they've read, they're going to be asked questions. And they're not only being asked questions, they also have to say how confident they are going into the question. Learn Smart's uh, algorithms determine, based on all these, this data, what students know and what they don't know and it prescribes a pathway to mastery. It's a personalized study coach or study tool available for our students. And teachers can go in and see uh, information on students' most challenging objectives. It's a really cool alternative to one of the other books that adapts to students' performance. And if you look at the infographic on the left, you can see uh, the data on students with Learn Smart and Smart Book and without. Uh, so we're gonna walk uh, through that uh, today as well. When we wrap up the module, we're going to revisit the phenomena or claim evidence in the reasoning loop. We're going to see uh, a data analysis lab. Uh, analyzing and interpreting data is a science and engineering practice that students literally need practice on in order to get proficient. So we're going to provide some practice on that very important skill, some scientific data, and ask students to make sense of it and tell us what it's telling them and what it's not telling them. And then it's referencing the STEM, STEM project right here. When it comes to assessment in Inspire Science, you've got all different options, whether it be formative, a, a summative, performance assessments with our STEM project, and the ability to create tests from scratch. 
So every module and lesson will have a pre-made lesson quiz and test. If you want to use it as is, feel free to do that. But you can also add your own questions, modify ours, then print those out or assign them digitally, as you can see on the right, and have students complete digitally. In fact, this is a technology enhanced question where, student, uh, question where students are manipulating things on the screen. You've got great variety. And last but not least, a 3D assessment guide. So 3D assessment guide is designed uh, to prepare students for more rigorous assessments. When they're in guided practice, there's a 3D coach. Here we see a 3D coach on the page, a 3D coach on the page. Now, once they've had these tips, these 3D coaches are kind of a, 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 um, a guide on the side, giving a tip strategy or suggestion for success on that type of question. Now, once students gain confidence and they get out of guided practice, they're in practice. And I don't see a 3D coach on these questions. Now, they're ready for this type of question. It'll be topic tests, unit tests, uh, performance-oriented assessments throughout this 3D assessment guide. So now we're done with the overview. Let's take a look at the online experience and get an idea how, of how it supports the digital experience. Now, I know we have some questions with this large of a group. I wish I could stop for every question, but we're gonna answer questions at the end. So Sarish will make a note of those questions that come up over and over again, and we'll answer them at the end. I hope that's okay. I appreciate you sharing them. Keep sharing them and we'll get to them at the end. I wanna get as far as we can for our new users. So that was just a little PowerPoint overview, kind of walking you through some of the components of the program. Let's take a look at the online experience and, and give you an idea of uh, what it has available to you. And what are those options of eBooks that uh, Jason mentioned earlier? So let's take a look. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna enter a class. I'm gonna enter my biology class, okay? The first screen you see when you enter a class is called the dashboard screen. It's uh, the first screen you see, and it says dashboard here. Dashboard is shaded over here on the left. It's one of the many navigational locations I have to go to as a teacher. I could hide these navigational locations by clicking on this icon here in the upper left. There they disappear. I find that most teachers like to keep them open. So I'm going to click it again, and here it's open. Now, one of the things I see on my dashboard screen here is ebook inspire science let me open up the student ebook okay now a tool that you if you haven't started using it i think you should because it, it'll make things a lot easier for you is this little icon right here what it does is it opens it up in another window if you're like me i like to have a lot of windows open and i toggle between window and window so i'm going to open this up in another window there it opens up in another window and now i can close this smaller original version and here's my ebook in another window. So we're in structures and organelles. And I'm going to clear all highlights in this resource. Okay. Now, this is a digital version of the print book. Okay. So it mirrors the look and the feel of the print book, the student hardbound print book, uh, except it has a few digital features here. Let's explore them. I can, as a student, if, if my teacher, uh, if, I, if, if I want to access the content this way, I can have the page read to me. There's a speaker button. Okay, what else is there here? I come down here. If I click and drag on a section, I can have that section read to me. A toolbar appears. And one of my options is read selected text. As a student, I could also highlight this section. Okay, there are highlighted in blue. I come down here in the bottom right, uh, a little bit farther down on the page. Let's uh, do another tool here. Maybe I want to make a note for myself. Ask Mr. Marshall if this will be on the test. Now I've got an annotated page. How do I know I've got a note waiting for me there? Well, if you notice there, there's a little red dotted line under there. It tells me I have a note waiting for me. So two weeks later, I come back to this page. I can click on it. Oh, yeah, I better ask Mr. Marshall if this could be on the test. I made a little reminder to myself. Or down here, maybe I just want to make a little bookmark. We call them place marks. So I'm going to make a little bookmark here, just telling me I have to come back to this page. Now, as a student, all of those, uh, all of those customizations that we make, like the highlights, the annotations, the place marks, they all get stored for me as a student. So if I go up here to the upper left, 
Now, sure, I could navigate to different locations in the book. This will allow me to do that. So let's say if I want to leap forward and go to another module or lesson, I can. But notice here, up here, I've got my highlights, my notes, and my place marks stored for me. So if I click on my highlights, in my little lesson four folder, here's that highlight that I made, and it'll hyperlink me directly to that page. So not only are the highlights, the notes, and the place marks stored for students, they also hyperlink them to directly where they are. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in college, I used a little yellow highlighter and I highlighted my textbooks. And then maybe I had a bunch of sticky notes sticking out of my textbook, probably 20 sticky notes to, to go back to specific pages I thought were important. Your students are doing this digitally now. They're digitally highlighted. Uh, it keeps track of them and they can digitally hyperlink back to those pages. It's a much more efficient way of navigating a book. So this is the regular ebook. Okay, it's simple, but incredibly effective and useful for students to mark up the textbook. Their physical textbook, you're probably not going to allow them to to highlight it, but this digital textbook, they can. That's just the that's the first version of the book that you could choose to have students use for your instruction. Let's take a look at the uh, couple other options available. Now. To navigate, I'm going to use the Browse the Course tool, okay, which is also found here in Course. Okay? Remember, those two tools, Resources and Course View, are found in my dashboard and in my Course View. Remember, this is my digital filing cabinet. Okay? So if I go to my module for, oh, let's say cell structure and function, and I scroll down here, I have learning resources as one of my folders. I have module planning and presentation resources. I've got a module opener. Now, module planning and presentation resources, that, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's probably going to house teacher content, things that are for me, the teacher. And sure it does here. I've got my teacher's edition for this module. I've got my science notebook answer key and my reading essentials. And by the way, the science notebook, remember that's the Cornell notes. If you use the answer key, it makes a pretty nice study guide. You may not have thought of it as that way uh, up until now, but think of the, the teacher version of the uh, Cornell notes as a pretty effective study guide. So keep that in mind. You could print that out and give it to students because some students may just not take notes or, or they can't take notes for whatever reason. And here I have a PowerPoint here. So here's my teacher planning tools. Now, if I go to learning resources here, let's take a look at the variety I have to implement this student ebook. Let's say I want students to read, wanted students to read this module on cell structure and function. Okay. I could preview it and notice it takes me directly to that module, cell structure and function. And if I want to assign this to them, I could assign this reading to my student for my students for a grade. Let's go ahead and assign. Let's, hold on. Let me not, not assign it right here. I'll assign it in a different location. Okay. So that's one option. The regular ebook that we just looked at, that we highlighted, that we annotated, uh, that's one option for students. There's a Spanish version of the ebook. Now, Spanish may not be a big issue in your area, but just know it's available. Okay. It's a PDF of the Spanish, uh, the book in Spanish. Here's my reading essentials. That's another alternative. It's the same as my uh, regular book, same headings and sub same subheadings, but it's written two to three grade levels below my regular ebook. I find that a lot of biology and physical science teachers, they, they start using this uh, reading essentials, and this is what they use instead of the book, or at least for a third of the year or a quarter of the year. Once they find they start using it, they like it, and they think their students like it as well, and students can type in answers here along the way. So it's an alternative to the regular ebook. Okay? It's another option. Um, you could use one, both. Um, it's really up to you. There's a Spanish reading essentials here. And then I've got a smart book here, okay? Hold that thought. I would not assign the smart book here and I'll share with you why here in just a little bit, okay? If I go down to a lesson, let's go to structures and organelles. I go to my learning resources folder. Here I have a lesson version of my ebook. So it'll take me directly to lesson four. Maybe I want to assign that to my students for a week. So I'm going to go ahead and assign it here. 
I decide when I want it to be due. I want them to read by tomorrow. So I'll say Tuesday. I'm going to say read. Uh, highlight along the way for you to study effectively. Okay. Who do I want to receive it? I want all of my students to receive it and I want to make it worth 100 points. Okay. Do I want to copy this to all of my classes? Absolutely. There's nothing more frustrating than creating an assignment, having to create an assignment five different times for five different periods. Our platform doesn't do that. So click select all, and now it goes out to all classes. And I click assign. A red bar appears letting me know I assign that reading assignment to my students. Okay? And they can go in and highlight and annotate. If I think they need the reading essentials for this lesson, I could print this out right here and make copies. Or maybe I assign this instead. So it's maybe I, I, I choose not to assign this, and instead I assign the reading essentials. I could do that. It's my it's an alternative to the regular ebook. I could also assign the smart book lesson here, but I wouldn't. And hold that thought. So I've advised not assigning it here at the lesson level. I also advise not assigning it at the module level. There's a better way to do it that I'm going to share with you. So so far we've seen the regular ebook. That's an option for students to access the content. They have the reading essentials. That's an uh, opportunity for them to access the content at a lower level. There is the Spanish version. Now, there's another version I'm going to have you take a look at, and it's the interactive version of the ebook. So imagine instead of assigning this entire lesson, what if I could break this lesson into nice little segments? Not too much reading, just enough, makes a perfect homework assignment. Maybe it has an assessment at the end. Could I? break this lesson into little chunks like that? It's already broken down into little chunks like that. So let's go to explore, explain. Here's that lesson broken down into chunks, okay? It will start up here and engage. This is the engage section of that lesson. When we get to explore and explain, here are those sections broken down into little segments. And when I assign it here, it's gonna be a little bit more interactive than the regular ebook that we explored uh, a few moments ago. Let's take a look at what I mean by that. I'm going to preview it here. I'm going to open up it in another window. Okay, remember that icon allows you to open up in another window. And there it is. We're in page one of cell shape and movement, a section in this textbook. I've got the images here. So I've got a speaker button here, right? So, so far it looks kind of the same. I can click and drag on a section. I can highlight this section. Oh, you're, you're probably saying to yourself, Jason, this is the same format. Okay, hold on, hold on, not quite. So far, it's the same. It will keep track of my highlights. There's that highlight that you just saw me create. There it is. I can hyperlink to it. So far, it's the same. But if I scroll down here, I've got page one of five here. So uh, just five pages in this particular assignment. But if I scroll down here, let's see if there's any differences. Ah. It's a little interactive here. I didn't have this in my regular ebook. So I can click on this, see the plasma membrane. Let me click on this. Microfilaments, microtubules, all layers. Okay, so these are things that I can manipulate as a student. So that's different. If I go to page two up here of this assignment, now my screen is coming alive a little bit. On the right-hand side, I have color-enhanced electron microscope photographs of cilia. On the left-hand side, a little, a little widget, same with flagella. So there's just embedded little interactivity. And some of these assignments, there'll be a, a video here. They click on the video button and it will play a video. This one doesn't have a video, but know that some are. That's different from the regular ebook. So this gives you an alternative. On page four, as a student, there is self-check practice. Okay, so maybe I'm going to I'm going to choose uh, B on this one. I'm going to choose C on this one. I can check my answers along the way. It's just self-check practice. And then at the end, there's an assessment that, that's awaiting students. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want my students to do. How do I assign it? I assign it right here in my little sign button. I click assign. I'm going to make it do on Wednesday. I'm going to say complete. I'm going to say read, uh, do the self-check practice, and complete 
the check at the end. What a great little homework assignment that's written, that's already pre-made for me. Do I want it to go out to all of my classes? Yes, I do. And I click assign. Now, whenever you assign something, a red bar appears at the bottom. And it shows up in a couple locations. This assignment will show up in a couple locations. Here it says when I assigned it and when it is due. If I go up here and go to assignments, I'll see that assignment here. Here's the regular ebook that I signed earlier. And here's that interactive ebook that we just assigned. So assignments keeps a running list of my assignments. Where else will that assignment show up? It will show up in my calendar. These are those two assignments. Now that doesn't look much like a calendar because we're in the day view. If I go over to month view, now it looks a little bit more like a calendar. When I assigned it and when it is due. That assignment will also show up in my dashboard screen. Why does it show up in my dashboard screen? Because we didn't see this earlier, but the dashboard has a small little calendar here as well. Okay, so your, your first screen, you see your dashboard telling you which assignments are open right here. Okay, so let's go back. So we've seen the ebook. Uh, we've seen the, the ability to create an, a, uh, let's say, a, a book assignment three different ways in three different types of books. We've seen the regular ebook. Okay, here it is on the dashboard screen. We took a look at it. We've seen that I could assign this at the lesson level by going to the course view, go into a specific lesson, go to learning resources. And here I could assign that a lesson, and we did. So if you want to direct students just to, just to a reading assignment that looks like their print book, it'll take them right there. Feel free to do that. We know that if I have students that have lower reading levels, or just maybe for all students, I have an alternative. It's called the Reading Essentials. I could assign that. But this Reading Essentials is only for physical science and biology, so to keep that in mind. I could have them take notes with the science notebook, the Cornell system for notes. Okay. And then I, I've just discovered that that lesson, that ebook lesson, so right here, is broken down into nice little chunks that I could assign as homework assignments. And we just previewed one and assigned one. Is there another version of the book that I could assign my students? Yes, there is. Okay. And you might use some of these. It, as you're, if you're watching this for the first time and are new to the program, you might like the regular ebook and just stick with that the whole time. That's perfectly fine, okay? Using that regular ebook right here is perfectly fine. You might decide, you know what, the reading essentials works fine. That's perfectly fine. Or you might say, no way, my students are like the interactivity of these chunks, so I'm gonna use that a long way. Or you might use all three, it's up to you. But you have one last version of the ebook that we haven't seen yet. And that is the smart book. Okay, so what is the smart book? Now, I could assign it here, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay? If I go to my module folder, go to learning resources, here it is again. I could assign it here because there's an assign button, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Let me share with you why. Okay? And, I almost, and, and I, I wouldn't doubt if before long the option to do so will be removed because I think it can, it, uh, I'll share with you why here. So let's preview the smart book here to, to, and I can share with you why I would not assign it here. And I want you to remember this because if you assign it here, you're probably, your students are probably gonna have a frustrating experience. And that's why I think this will be removed. Let's open it up. So if I assigned it from here, notice that it's gonna take students about two hours to complete and will cover 68 concepts. That's the entire module, right? That's too much content. I don't want my students to have this long of an assignment. It's way too long. So I would not assign it here for that reason. They'll never finish, or they, they, they could finish, but it's gonna take them a long time to finish, okay? That's why I would not assign it here. Let's take a look at the lesson level, and then we'll take a look at the correct way to assign it, or the, the way that I recommend. If I go to my lesson level, should be a little bit more narrowed focus since we're just at a lesson. I go to my Spark book here. Let's, let's uh, take a look at it here. 47 minutes, 26 concepts. That's still an awful lot for a high school student. You know, 47 minutes to complete this, 26 concepts. That's the entire lesson. You know, I don't think I want to assign it here either. Maybe occasionally you do, but I wouldn't assign it here. 
My recommendation to assign SmartBook would be to do it this way. Go to assignments. One of my options is to click add assignment. I'm gonna click add assignment. I scroll down here and I see SmartBook. Okay, let me repeat what we just did. Okay, I go back to dashboard. I go to assignments. I click add assignment. I scroll down here, I hear SmartBook. This is the way that I recommend you create a SmartBook assignment. Let's continue and see how it, how it, uh, how I create it. I'm going to click on that. First thing I have to do is decide is this going to be a new assignment or a review assignment. I'm going to choose new assignment. Okay. Now I scroll down. What module, what unit do I want to be a part of this? Okay. I'm going to choose the cell. And I click continue. Notice I have to choose a unit or continue. It just won't allow me to click here. I can't click on continue until I choose a unit. Could I choose two units? Yeah, I could. If I want to have some topics from unit two and a few topics from unit three, I could. But I'm just gonna choose one unit, unit two. And now I can click continue. Okay, what modules do you wanna be a part of this? Right now we have the entire unit. Take a look at this, up to 499 minutes. No way, 277 concepts, absolutely not. It's the entire unit. So let's drill down. So we've already covered module six, so I don't want that to be a part of it. Now watch how the scope over here starts to reduce. We haven't got to module eight, so I'm gonna eliminate that. Now we're just on module seven, but still very long. Let's break it down even more. We've covered lesson one, self discovery and theory, lesson two and lesson three. We're on lesson four, so I want it just to be this. Now we're down to what we saw if we would have assigned it the lesson folder. 47 minutes, 26 concepts. But the reason we came in here is because we didn't want to assign at the lesson level. We wanted to narrow the focus even more. So let's do that. Click on this arrow. Now I can really drill down here. So you know what? I just want to focus on cell structures. So I'm just going to eliminate these. Notice how the focus continues to reduce. Now we're getting to a manageable territory here. Maybe you assign it, maybe you click continue from here and you have students um, have a smart book assignment or alert smart assignment on all uh, just these structures. That's perfectly fine, but sometimes you may want to even focus even more. So I'm gonna open that up. And you know what? I think some students get these two confused, cytoplasm and cytoskeleton. So I'm just gonna focus on those two. Just for the sake of this training, I'm just gonna make it very narrow focused. I continue to scroll down, two concepts, two to four minutes for my students to complete, just on the cytoskeleton and the uh, cytoplasm. And if I want to preview a type of question that they're going to be asked, I can preview the type of, que a type of question. Okay? So I have the assignment the way I want. I have the exact content that I want to be a part of this. I click continue. Now what I'm going to get is what I like to call the assignment wizard screen. And I'm just, I have to give it a name. I'm going to call it the smart book assignment. When do I want it due? Oh, how about Wednesday? How many points? 100. And uh, what classes get it? All of my classes. And again, all along the way, I could always assign this to Google if I wanted to. Uh, and it will share with my Google Classroom. I click assign. So now we have three different types of ebooks that have been assigned to my students. We have the regular ebook for this lesson structures and organelles. We have the interactive ebook with those widgets and uh, movement in it. And we have the smart book, okay? And again, you could use some of these or, or all of these as part of your instructional plan. So what does it look like on the student side? Let's open up a student and, and complete these assignments as a student might. So I'm going to open up another window here. And I'm gonna go in as my student, Jim. And I'm going to log in. Jim just, uh, he's in biology, so I'm going to open up a biology class. The student experience looks very similar to the teacher experience, doesn't it? Except students have fewer choices over here. You don't see roster over here because students don't need a roster. They're just a student. Students have just the locations they need as a student. 
on the student home screen, they have their regular ebook. So at any time they can access their digital ebook right here and they can go anywhere they want in the, in the book. This is the one that they can annotate, they can highlight, uh, they can mark it up, they can do whatever they want in this ebook. This is their digital ebook. They can have audio, all those tools you saw me do earlier. Here it is. This is their reading essentials here. They always have access to it. So even though uh, I could assign it, they always have access to it. You don't have to assign it. Uh, they go into their book. They always have access to that lower level reading. Okay. Here's their Cornell notes. So some of the main tools they always have access to. They don't need to be assigned. Well, let's go to my assignments that were assigned to me. Okay. By the way, students have a calendar. They have a course view. And when you assign something on your side, remember how it populates your assignments, your calendars, it's doing the exact same thing simultaneously on your student side. So when you click assign, it's populating those screens on your side and it's populating those screens on your student side. Let's, let's go to the assignment section and access them there. Here's my regular ebook. This is where my teacher just wanted me to read and they focused my attention on this specific lesson. Notice as a student, it takes me directly to this lesson. My teacher told me to highlight, so I'll go ahead and highlight. Okay, I'll go ahead and highlight this blue here. And after I'm done reading, I click Submit Assignment. Okay, got it. I submitted that assignment, and now it's been sent to my teacher telling me I've completed, I've read that lesson, I highlighted just like you told me to. Now, notice it no longer shows up in my to-do section. Now it's in my past work section. I've completed that assignment, so it shows up here. I go back to my to-do section. I've got that interactive ebook. Maybe my teacher has, falls in, has fallen in love with this interactive format. Students love it because it has videos in it and interactivity. Not everyone will have a video and interactivity, but many of them do, so just keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of these chunked assignments will have interactivity. So as a, a teacher, my student sent this to me. I had this open in another training, by the way, so you already see highlighting in here. That's why the highlighting is already in there. So students can interact in here. They can go to page two, they can see this. They go to page three, there's self-check practice for them in page four. And then there's assessment that they can complete for a grade, okay? When they're done with this, uh, when they complete this, let me go ahead and just answer a couple of these here. Uh, I'll answer this one. This one, I'll click done and review, and then I'll click submit. When they complete this assignment, this chunked version of the lesson, the segmented version of the lesson, uh, now when they go into their assignments, it's in past work. Only one is left to do. So the assignment that we haven't seen on the student side is smart book. What does it look like when students go online? We created it on the teacher side, but what does it look like on the student side? Let's take a look. I open up SmartBook. Now, it tells me about how long it's gonna take, how many concepts. Now, if a student has read in the regular ebook or the interactive ebook or the uh, reading essentials, maybe they just wanna go right into questions. They're ready. They say, I don't need to read this. I'm, I'm ready for it. I can go right into questions. But if a student does need to read, they can start with the reading. And here's that book waiting for them. So it looks more like the, the regular ebook, except one thing. The topics that are going to be part of this assignment come pre-highlighted. So remember, we created a, a assignment on cytoplasm and cytoskeleton. So here we see cytoplasm highlighted. If I scroll down here, cytoskeleton content highlighted. So it will pre-highlight the areas that are part of this assignment. This is a study tool for your students. So once student thinks they're ready, they go to questions. Notice what it says, make progress by completing assignments. The number of questions will vary upon your independent, your individual needs. So every student will get a different pathway depending upon their performance, and that's fine. This is a study tool that's adapting to that individual's performance. It's okay to get questions wrong. You're gonna, you'll still earn 100% if you complete the entire assignment. That's important. It's okay to get questions wrong. This is not an assessment tool. SmartBook is a study tool for students. Last but not least, submit your answers by selecting your confidence level. 
this will not affect your grade. Make sure to tell this to your students. Be honest. If you're not confident going into the question, say you're not confident. If you're very confident, say you're confident. You know how students are. They'll try to get sneaky or try to game the system, think they're smarter than the system, and maybe tell you what they think you, you'll want to hear. Tell them, no, no, don't do that. You're only hurting yourself, okay? Be honest with the program so that it can give you a personalized pathway to mastery. And so I'm a student. I see I got it. So here, the environment inside the plasma membrane is a semi-fluid material called, I'm going to say, Now, some of you might be thinking, he's misspelling that word. And I did misspell cytoplasm. Let's see what happens. Now, I, I put my answer here. Now, I've got to say how confident I am. I'm going to say I'm very confident. Now, Learn Smart gave me the correct, says I was correct. Learn Smart wants to know whether you know uh, the correct answer or not. And not necessarily if you could spell prokaryotic or eukaryotic 100% of the time, every single time. So if a student is close with the spelling, it will give them correct answer. And that's important. Imagine a student saying, I got this. This is cytoplasm. I know this. And, it's, and they misspelled it and it goes, eh, you are wrong. Now they don't know if they're wrong or if they don't know if they misspelled it. You want a program to be a little bit smarter than that. And ours is. So it, knew, it recognized that I knew the correct answer. I just misspelled it. I go to the next question. I'm going to say, and I'm going to say I'm highly confident. Now, so I got a couple right in a row. But LearnSmart isn't going to trust that you get a couple right. It wants to revisit this and, and ask you it in a different way. So I had to type in my answer the first time. Now it's going to re, uh, reinforce with a multiple choice. Now let's see if I get a que couple questions wrong what happens. So I'm going to say vacuole for here. I'm going to say I'm highly confident. Okay, incorrect. Let me go to the next question. And I'm going to say centriole, medium confidence, incorrect. Notice what it does. It says I have to go back into this resource to read. It won't allow me to go any further before I read. So LearnSmart will not let them go, you know, sort of willy-nilly and just keep continuing to try to get to the end really fast. They have to get the answers correct. And if they don't get the answers correct, they got to go back in and do some additional reading. So I'm forced to go back in and get some additional reading. And it'll take me to the content that it says that I'm, I'm having some trouble with. And now that content is blue. So it pre-highlights it yellow with the content will be a part of the assignment. If you start missing questions, it will highlight in blue your troubled areas. And then I can go back in and complete this assignment, okay? So you might be thinking as a new user, man, oh man, I've got these different types of books and, and how might I use this, this smart book assignment, this smart book tool, okay? Let me go back into my teacher side and share with you some use case scenarios. And I may have earlier, if I, I my first session and this session are starting to run into each other, but let me, let me go over these use case scenarios for SmartBook, what we just saw. How might you use it? Maybe you use it to flip your classroom. You assign students the lesson on cell structure and function a week ahead of time, a week before you go into it. Now, they're getting some reading ahead of time. They're being asked questions. Maybe you get to test their prior knowledge, and you're going to get some information on your side as to how students perform it. Okay. Uh, that's one option, flipping the classroom. Maybe you use it concurrently with your classroom. You're in cell structure and function today. And then after class, you assign them a smart book um, lesson on cell structure and function just to see what they remembered. They could read if they want to, but maybe they remember and they go straight to the questions and, see what, and, and uh, test their knowledge. So you could use it concurrently. The other one is, is test prep. You were in cell structure and function two, two weeks ago, and you're worried students have forgotten a little bit about it. Maybe refresh their memory with a uh, smart book assignment on cell structure and function. They read, they're answering questions, and they get back up to speed. And all of these use case scenarios are all right. It's perfectly fine. And we may not have time to go into it, but once you get their assignments back, you're going to see some data here on the teacher side. So if I go to assignments, I click on Learn Smart Book. And so nobody's completed this yet, just for the, uh, but when they do, you'll be able to pull up an assignment report that will show you students' uh, areas of weakness. Now, right now, it won't have any data uh, but because nobody has completed this, but you'll be able to see exactly what students know, what they don't know. Their challenging of concepts will show up here. 
uh, how confident they are going into the questions will show up here. And it'll give you some data on what, what, um, where you have some work left to do. It'll give you some data to inform your instruction. So I'm gonna wrap up here and just review a couple things. As a new user or user of the program, you have two ways of finding your resources. Search for resources and browse course. These same two tools are here in the course view. Same exact two tools, two different locations. Search for resources is a filtering tool. I could filter by keyword search if I want to. Okay, I could do that. I could search by resource type, like PDFs. Okay? That's not the first way I would filter. My recommendation is to start with, go to the lesson you're teaching tomorrow. So I'm gonna choose unit two. Now it's filtered down to 443. I'm gonna choose module seven. Now I'm down to 110. Lesson four. Now I'm down to 21. That's the way I would filter first. If then you want to type in a keyword search, you can, and it'll filter even more, uh, but I would start with uh, that lesson first. And now you, it'll present your resources in a list, things that you could use to teach this class, this lesson. The course view as an alternative is your digital filing cabinet. It doesn't present your resources in a list. Instead, it organizes your resources into digital file folders. When you go to that same lesson, those resources are organized in their file folders. I prefer this way of finding my stuff. Maybe I'm just, that's just the way my brain works. I know many teachers that like their resources presented to them in a list. So they use the resource search. It's really up to you. All the resources will be present either way. They'll just be presented and organized differently. Last thing I'll share with you here, is that if I go to evaluate, I have a lesson check that I could assign my students. It's an assessment for this lesson. If I go to my module file folders, down here, I've got a module assessment. It's a pre-made module test. I could assign that to my students. Okay? My assessments are also available to me down here in assessments. Same, same module test, same lesson test, just in a different location. And if I want to assign a module pretest, I could assign it here. I've got my module post test here. I could assign it here. And I've got little individual little checks on specific topics I could assign as well. To assign these, let's say this module test, I just come over here to the kebab menu, the three stack dots. I click assign, just like we have before on the other assignments. I'll have a screen that will appear and it'll give me some choices as to. Um, my screen may be locking up on me here a little bit, but it'll give me some choices that I had before. Who do I want to receive it? When do I want it due? And that will be available to my students uh, in their assignment section. And so I'm at the end of this hour and I'm, I'm, I know it's been short. I know it's been fast and furious. Uh, if you're a new user, hopefully I introduced you to the program a little bit. We can follow up uh, with another training. And if you're an existing user, maybe I showed you something you hadn't seen before. Maybe I communicated um, a use in a way that you hadn't considered before. But uh, there's only so much can be done in an hour. I'm here to answer any questions that may have come up. Sarish, any any questions that, uh, that you see? Hello. Yes, we do have a couple of questions that have come in. But thank you, Jason. Wonderful presentation, like always. Thank you. And uh, the first question is really a simple one. So are all of these resources available offline? Are all of these available, uh, available offline? Uh, okay. Some, but not all, okay? So some resources like, let's say the ebook. If I go into my ebook, uh, this is a student ebook. There's no way for students to print this ebook out or for you to print these out. So that, that's an example of one that would not be available offline. If I go to my course view, Remember, I like to call this my digital filing cabinet. And I scroll down here, you're going to see some resources that can be used offline and some that can't. So, you know, uh, like this reading essentials, it's a PDF file here. So PDF files, as we all know, can be printed out and saved onto my desktop. So I could, I could use this offline 
and uh, don't need the internet once I have it on my desktop. Same with this science notebook or the Cornell notes. It can be used offline. If I continue on into my lesson model and to explore and explain, down here, uh, I'll, I'll have labs. Let me go to another lesson here. So it's transport. I come in here to explore and explain. I've got different labs and investigations. And all of our labs, most of our labs are in Word document format. So we've got PDFs, we've got Word. I can download this Word document right here. Don't forget this download file button. It will download in a Word. And as we know, Word documents can be used offline. And of course, I could edit this document, okay? So that can be used offline. Um, but some resources can't. So like this FET simulation, that's, that's an online experience. Students have to be online to use it. And McGraw-Hill has some resources in here that have to be online to use them. Like the little segments of the lessons, those can't be printed out. So the experience is a combination of print resources like Word and, and PDF and digital experiences where students have to be online to use them. Makes sense. Um, Roba says, thank you for the wonderful presentation. I was wondering if it's possible to download the teacher ebook as a PDF or any of the assessments. Um, the teacher ebook, no. So this, the teacher ebook cannot be downloaded as a PDF. It exists only online. Um, if you need a print version, I would probably recommend working with your sales region to get make sure you have print versions of the student teacher edition if you need them. Uh, that's possible. Mm -hmm. As far as assessments go, the assessments can be printed. So any assessment that I create or any one of the pre-made assessments can be printed out. So if I go into my assessments folder, and let's say I want to print out this module pretest, I just can come over here and I click print. I decide what font size and style that I want to, to make it. And then I can click print it out. And all my all my printed out versions will show up right here in my download. So all the print version, all the assessments can be printed, but the teacher's edition cannot. Okay, makes sense. And following that, it says, is it possible to edit, delete, or cover any content from the ebook before assigning it to the students? as some topics may be restricted by MOE. Okay, gotcha. Uh, let me let me see. I'm just kind of thinking out uh, and working out loud here. The yeah, that's an way, interesting one. Yeah, so can topics be um, restricted from students? Correct. Yes, so yes but not, you know, not as well as you might like. So let me show you what I mean by that. So, um, here I have a, the ebook here. And one of my options here in the ebook is hide from students. Okay. If I go down here into my folders, maybe let's say this is a topic right here. I don't want my students to have access to it. I click on this button, I have hide from students. And now they won't have access to this, this content when they go online. So that is one way to do it. But notice I kind of have to do it, you know, a section at a time if I want to hide that from students. So I guess the short answer is yes, but it's it's a little complicated. And, and you know, it'd be nice if there was a one big screen that showed all lessons and I could click on, you know, a, a mm -hmm. check next to the lessons I don't want the students to get. But it's really done in this platform, a resource at a time. Correct. I'm sorry, we're out of time, I know, but one more question. It's because it's coming again in the chat box. Sorry, Magdi, but I don't get the question quite well. I wonder if Jason gets it. It says, do STEAM curricula have a separated McGraw-Hill programs? So if by STEAM, you mean science, technology, engineering, the arts, and yes. mathematics? No, it's just uh, the same curriculum, this biology program for both STEM and STEAM. It's one biology program for both. Now, thank you, Jason. Yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, do all the lessons have a PPT presentation? Uh, I believe so. So if we go to the lesson, let's take a look. If I go to a lesson, let's say uh, cellular transport, and I go to my lesson planning and presentations, here's my PowerPoint for that specific lesson. 
Now it just gives you a starting point. It's a fairly plain PowerPoint, but it'll get you up. It'll get you heading in the right direction. And there are images embedded. And if you want to add some text and add images, you can as well. But every lesson will have a shell of a PowerPoint for that lesson. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. I'm sorry we're not able to take any more questions at this moment. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for joining us today. So glad that you could make it for our session. And thank you, Jason, for being such a great presenter. It's great to be with you all. Uh, you'll get the recording of the session in your inbox as well as the certificate as well. I just want to remind you because a couple of questions came in about that as well. Have a great the rest of the day. Thank you so much, everyone. See you next time. Thank you all. Take care. Let us know if we can help. Yes, please. Thank you.